everybody. Uh, I am Jalen, and we are the Mamado College representatives for this year MCNC Leadership Conference. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for your applause. <laughs> Anyways, I'm Emmanuel. Uh, our school has been doing this conference for about 20 years now, and it's um, held in various places. This year it's being held at Washington, D.C., and every year there's a different objective. This year's objective was to either make a, um, a project based on social injustices or injustice, or either do lobbying. We chose to do lobbying. For those of you who don't know, lobbying is um, the act of persuading or influencing the government and government officials to act upon something. For <coughs> Uh, for our lobbying project, we had to do funding for middle early colleges across the nation, and more specifically in uh, Michigan. We hope to meet with our local representative, Dan Kildee, or one of his assistants in DC while we're there. It's been a long, hard process, but in the end, it'll be worth it because through all our research, we'll hopefully influence Dan Kildee to advocate for funding of middle early colleges in Michigan. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm short. <laughs> you don't apologize for that. You don't apologize for that. Hi guys, my name is Demi. One of the first tests we had to do was to find out like more about our school and the benefits and why you guys chose to come here. So we created a survey that me and James did. James, would you like to talk about All right, so as you can see, we put together the survey and everything, but it was a new experience because none of us have used the SurveyMonkey program before and though it was easy setting up the survey, getting some of you guys to answer was like pulling teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but these are your guys' answers up here and this is why you guys came to Mott and what you like about it and what you're pursuing. You guys should be happy about this. <laughs> well, you can see that most of you guys chose to come here because of free college and that some of the positives are the free is the free college. And most of you plan on pursuing more of a Master's degree, going up pursuing a master's degree. Do any of you, any of you guys remember taking the survey? No. <laughs> so, what'd you pick for why you came here? Free college. Yeah, that's what you see. You're not the only one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Micah. Um, another assignment that we had was to do some research on our school's history and some of our credentials. One of the things that we found was like a huge growth in our school when we first started. We only had about 100 kids maybe, now we have almost 400 kids. We have, it was a big growth. Another thing that we noticed was the, with the amount of college students take now versus the amount of college students took when we first started, back then, our graduates graduated with like a credit maybe. Now you see last year our graduates, 15% of them had an associate's degree and about most of them had an average of 33 college <coughs> credits each. So that's a good thing, it's a big girl. Hi, I'm Sam. Oh, uh, like, <clears throat> like Micah said, one of the like biggest changes we've had is the amount of college credits we get. And one of the yearbooks that Mount Middle had from about 15 years ago, their seniors' accomplishments were getting one college credit. And that's completely different from now because we're required to get at least a minimum of 15, even graduate high school. And of course, with more classes, there's a lot bigger price to pay. And we end up spending about $1,800 at least on every student. And that doesn't even include books, which came in at about $34,000 last semester. And that's a lot. That we don't have to pay for it all. <laughs> Who pays for it? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> also through research, we found out um, we had to... Okay. 
Sorry. You're fine. <laughs> also, through your research, we had to find out about other um, opportunities that other high schools in our area offer. And we found out that in traditional high schools, you can be dual enrolled, but it's a much harder process because you have to talk with your counselor and be approved by him or her to take the college class. And then you have to pay out of pocket for that college class, find transportation, and make sure it fits in with your regular high school schedule. So it's just a much harder process to do if you're in a traditional high school, and it's much more expensive. We do have like other middle colleges, and they do follow the same program as my middle college. But some colleges like Baker, Baker Career Academy, you have to like do your mandatory classes, but then after that, once you get into your college classes, you really start doing like, you follow like one career path and that's it. There's not much room for opportunities to explore other careers that you may be interested in. Okay, <laughs> okay. like Emmanuel said at the beginning, <laughs> Thank you. it's been, kind of a difficult process and one of our, like in continuing the process of research, we were looking for legislation and bills related to the funding for early middle colleges and we contacted some people from the Michigan Department of Education and we were hoping to get some information that we hadn't already, you know, gotten and found. But we found that they weren't really aware of what the legislation, where it is right now and they thought that it was older, so it was kind of difficult because we were expecting them to find more. Oh, the Fast Track to College Act of 2013, which is only in the second step of becoming a bill right now, and it hasn't moved in a year. We just, we were looking for people who were in the Department of Education, and we found a couple people, and we emailed them, and they kind of sent us around to different people, and we're getting replies from hey, at first sent an email to someone who I think works with Dan, Dan Kildy, hoping to, that she could direct us in where we could find some more information. And Brian Barber, the alternate education consultant from the Michigan Department of Education, emailed us back saying that there isn't cur any current or pending legislation at the federal level for middle early college funding. And that was different than what we had found because obviously we found that there was. It just hadn't moved. And we emailed him back saying that we had found that. And he sent us to Patricia Cantu, who, and she basically, yeah, he, she said that they hadn't moved in over a year. And that's where we got. So we're still at. Just speak with it. Hold on. So hopefully, <laughs> we'll be able to find more information about legislation in place for funding from early colleges. And once we find that information, we will hopefully meet up with our local resident, Dan Kildee, in Washington, D.C. on May 2nd. And if not him, then one of his assistants. Thank you for your time. All right, give him, give him another big hand.